Republican National Convention where U.S. Secretary of State right. Mike Pompeo is speaking. Back the curtain on the predatory aggression of the Chinese Communist Party. The president has held China accountable for covering up the China virus and allowing it to spread death and economic destruction in America and around the world. And he will not rest until justice is done. He has ensured that the Chinese Communist Party spies posing as diplomats in America are jailed or sent back to China. And he has ended the ridiculously unfair trade arrangement with China that punched a hole in our economy. Those jobs, those jobs are coming back home. In North Korea, the president lowered the temperature and against all odds got the North Korean leadership to the table. No nuclear tests, no long-range missile tests, and Americans held captive in North Korea came home to their families as did the precious remains of scores of heroes who fought in Korea. Today, today because of President Trump, NATO is stronger, Ukraine has defensive weapon systems, and America left a harmful treaty so our nation can now build missiles to deter Russian aggression. And in the Middle East, when Iran threatened, the president approved a strike that killed the Iranian terrorist Qasem Soleimani. This is the man most responsible for the murder and maiming of hundreds of American soldiers and thousands of Christians across the Middle East. And you'll recall, too, that when the president took office, radical Islamic terrorists had beheaded Americans, and ISIS controlled a territory in the size of, the size of Great Britain. Today, today, because of the president's determination and leadership, the ISIS caliphate is wiped out. It's gone. Its evil leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, is dead. And our brave soldiers, they're on their way home. The president exited the U.S. from the disastrous nuclear deal with Iran and squeezed the Ayatollah, Hezbollah, and Hamas. The president, too, moved the U.S. embassy to this very city of God, Jerusalem, the rightful capital of the Jewish homeland. And just two weeks ago, the president brokered a historic peace deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. This is a deal that our grandchildren will read about in their history books. You know, as a soldier, I saw firsthand people desperate to flee to freedom. The way each of us can best ensure our freedoms is by electing leaders who don't just talk, but who deliver. An American hostage imprisoned in Turkey for two years, Pastor Andrew Brunson, said upon his release that he survived his ordeal with these words of scripture, be faithful, endure, and finish well. If we stay the course, we will. May God richly bless you, and may God bless our great nation, the United States of America. That was U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo addressing the Republican National Convention from Jerusalem, making some strong remarks bolstering Trump's position on China, the stand against terrorism, as well as the U.S. broker deal between Israel and UAE, again brought into sharp focus. Once again, day two of the Republican National Convention has kick-started with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo speaking. As we all know, the race to the White House has now fully taken Quick speed after the formal nomination of Donald Trump for president and Mike Pence for vice president on day one, which was yesterday. And now, of course, the day two has kick-started officially. We just heard Mike Pompeo, that is the U.S. Secretary of State, speak at the RNC. He was, of course, addressing the RNC from Jerusalem, where the U.S. has recently brokered a deal between the UAE and Israel. Also, people scheduled to speak today will be First Lady Melania Trump, as well as Trump's children, Eric and Tiffany Trump. Vion will, of course, bring you all the updates from the second day of the Republican National Convention, which is currently underway. Some of the big highlights that have already taken place was a video of President Donald Trump overseeing a naturalization ceremony for five new U.S. citizens at the White House. The, the event was not open to reporters or photographers, but a video of the ceremony was later posted on the official White House YouTube channel. Some other highlights. The First Lady Melania Trump will deliver her remarks from the newly renovated White House Rose Garden shortly. The theme, of course, is the land of opportunity. That is a theme of the Republican National Convention, which is currently underway. The big speakers include 
Mike Pompeo, who just spoke shortly from Jerusalem, as well as the president's children, Tiffany and Eric Trump, who are also scheduled to speak shortly. First Lady Melania Trump stepping out onto the world stage. Her theme-based campaign is now going international. She has the advantage of speaking several languages. The U.S. president just delivered a speech where he said that the people who are originally from Bolivia, Lebanon, India, Sudan and Ghana have lived their lives lawfully on the American soil and have now been welcomed to the American family. A video of the nationalization ceremony was showcased on the YouTube channel, the official YouTube channel of White House, that is. Women have made lasting impacts on society. The convention started off with the U.S. president granting full pardon even to a Nevada man, that is John Ponder, who was convicted earlier of a bank robbery. And Trump described Ponder's story as a beautiful testament to the power of redemption. Ponder has now founded a non-profit group for the prisoners seeking redemption. This was a really prominent week for her. Once again, First Lady Melania Trump is scheduled to deliver her keynote address at the Republican National Convention shortly, and we'll be bringing you live updates from the same. First Lady, she is an incredible First Lady, an amazing mother, an incredible woman. First Lady Melania Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the First Lady of the United States, Mrs. Melania Trump. Like just yesterday that we were at our first convention where my husband accepted the Republican nomination and then became our 45th President of the United States. Yet the energy and enthusiasm for who should lead this nation, it is real today as it was four years ago. I know I speak for my husband and the entire family when I say we have not forgotten the incredible people who were willing to take a chance on the businessmen who had never worked in politics. We know it was you who elected him to be commander in chief. And we know it is you who will carry us through again. We were humbled by the incredible support then and we are still grateful today. I want to acknowledge the fact that since March, our lives have changed drastically. The invisible enemy, COVID-19, swept across our beautiful country and impacted all of us. My deepest sympathy goes out to everyone who has lost a loved one. And my prayers are with those who are ill or suffering. I know many people are anxious and some feel helpless. I want you to know you are not alone. My husband's administration will not stop fighting until there is an effective treatment or vaccine available to everyone. Donald will not rest until he has done all he can to take care of everyone impacted by this terrible pandemic. I want to extend my gratitude to all of the healthcare professionals, frontline workers and teachers who stepped up in these difficult times. 
despite the risk to yourselves and your own families. You put our country first, and my husband and I are grateful. I have been moved by the way Americans have come together in such an unfamiliar and often frightening situation. It is in times like this that we will look back and tell our grandchildren that through kindness and compassion, strength and determination, we were able to restore the promise of our future. Businesses stepped up and volunteers stepped in. People were eager to share ideas, resources, and support of all kinds with neighbors and strangers alike. It has been inspiring to see what the people of our great nation will do for one another, especially when we are at our most fragile. Speaking of strength and determination, we recently celebrated the 100-year anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment. Yesterday, on the North Lawn of the White House, we unveiled an exhibit dedicated to women's suffrage. The exhibit called on children from across the country to send art honoring the meaning of this important time in women's history. When I was judging the entries, I reflected on the impact of women's voices in our nation's story, and how proud I will be to cast my vote again for Donald this November. We must make sure that women are heard and that the American dream continues to thrive. Growing up as a young child in Slovenia, which was under communist rule at the time, I always heard about an amazing place called America a land that stood for freedom and opportunity. As I grew older, it became my goal to move to the United States and follow my dream of working in the fashion industry. My parents worked very hard to ensure our family could not only live and prosper in America, but also contribute to a nation that allows for people to arrive with a dream and make it reality. I want to take the moment to thank my mother and father for all they have done for our family. It is because of you that I'm standing here today. I arrived in the United States when I was 26 years old. Living and working in the land of opportunity was a dream come true but I wanted more. I wanted to be a citizen. After 10 years of paperwork and patience, I studied for the test in 2006 and became an American citizen. It is still one of the proudest moments in my life because with hard work and determination, I was able to achieve my own American dream. As an immigrant and a very independent woman, I understand what a privilege it is to live here and to enjoy the freedoms and opportunities that we have. As First Lady, I have been fortunate to see the American dream come true over and over again. I have met many inspiring women, children, parents, and families who have overcome life-changing issues that include addiction, homelessness, family members who are ill or have passed away, abuse of all kinds, and many other challenges that would make most people give up. The past three and a half years have been unforgettable. There are no words to describe how honored, humbled, and fortunate I am to serve our nation as your First Lady. After many of the experiences I've had, I don't know if I can fully explain how many people I take home with me in my heart each day. From brave soldiers who give up so much so that we can be free, to children of all circumstances 
who I have met around the world. Thank you for inspiring me. It is my greatest honor to serve you. When I speak to members of the military, despite sacrificing time with their families, experience the fear of war or suffering loss, they have no regrets about serving our country. The same goes for their families and the families of first responders who often watch their loved ones walk out the door, not sure if or when they will come home. When I speak to families who have lost someone, the pain mixed with pride I hear in their voices is something I think about often. So thank you to all who serve our country in the military and as first responders. And thank you to the families who wait for them. You are all heroes in your own right. I have also been moved by the many children and families I've spent time with at hospitals, schools, and other locations around the world. Children who are dealing with pain or illness that would break even the strongest adult. Parents who are grateful to wake up every day and see that their child is still alive. These families are a testament to what faith and medicine, strength and science can do. On my first international trip as First Lady, my husband and I visited places of great significance to the three major religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. One special memory from that trip is of a young boy I had the privilege of visiting while at Bambino Gesù Hospital in Rome, Italy. While there, I read the little boy a story and learned that he and his family had been waiting for a heart for a very long time, and he had a grim prognosis. His situation brought my staff and me to tears, and we spoke of a little else as we flew to Belgium for the next part of our trip. Upon landing just a few hours later, we learned that a heart had been donated and would be going to the little one. I think about him often, along with so many amazing and strong young patients across our own country. More profound and sadly unavoidable examples of our country's strength and character have occurred in the communities that have been impacted by natural disasters. Hurricanes, tornadoes, and flooding may show the ugly side of Mother Nature, but in their aftermath, they can show us a beautiful side of humanity. My husband and I have visited many places that have been affected by natural disaster, and we are deeply moved by the strength of the people who have lost everything, and the kindness of neighbors and communities. The common thread in all of these challenging situations is the unwavering resolve to help one another. I recognize the stories I just told are about people who survive extraordinary circumstances, but Donald and I are also inspired by the millions of Americans who wake up each day with a simple yet courageous goal of providing for their families and keeping them safe. You are the backbone of this country. You are the people who continue to make the United States of America what it is and who have the incredible responsibility of preparing our future generations to leave everything even better than they found it. Just as you are fighting for your families, my husband, our family, and the people in this administration are here fighting for you. No matter the amount of negative or false media headlines or attacks from the other side, Donald Trump has not and will not lose focus on you. He loves this country and he knows how to get things done. As you have learned over the past five years, he's not a traditional politician. He doesn't just speak words. He demands action and he gets results. 
The future of our country has always been very important to him, and it is something that I have always admired. In fact, it is to help ensure a better future for our next generation that I launched Be Best, my initiative to help children achieve their fullest potential. Be Best has one simple goal, teaching youth about the importance of their well-being, both mentally and physically. This also includes understanding online safety and the danger of opioid and drug abuse. Through Be Best, my office and I have been able to highlight people, programs, and organizations that are doing extraordinary things in our country and around the world. I continue, I continue to believe that by shining a light on these positive examples, others across the country and globe will become inspired to do their part for our next generation. Helping children is not a political goal. It is our moral imperative. When I think back to a defining moment of Be Best, my mind goes to a trip I took to Africa. On that vast and beautiful continent, I was able to visit the countries of Ghana, Malawi, Kenya, and Egypt. One of those visits in particular had a profound impact on me. Ghana, on the coast of West Africa, was the first stop on my trip, and I experienced firsthand its warm people and their traditions. While there, I visited the Cape Coast Castle and learned more about the beginning of a cruel and often deadly journey in the era of the slave trade. I was horrified when I listened to the guide tell me so many inhumane stories, and I gained new perspectives. It is time in our history. We must never forget so that we can ensure that it never happens again. Like all of you, I have reflected on the racial unrest in our country. It is a harsh reality that we are not proud of parts of our history. I encourage people to focus on our future while still learning from our past. We must remember that today we are all one community comprised of many races, religions, and ethnicities. Our diverse and storied history is what makes our country strong, and yet we still have so much to learn from one another. With that in mind, I like to call on the citizens of this country to take a moment, pause, and look at things from all perspectives. I urge people to come together in a civil manner so we can work and live up to our standard American ideals. I also ask people to stop the violence and looting being done in the name of justice and never make assumptions based on the color of a person's skin. Instead of tearing things down, tearing things down let's reflect on our mistakes. Be proud of our evolution and look to our way forward. Every day, let us remember that we are one nation under God and we need to cherish one another. My husband's administration has worked to try and effect change when it comes to issues around race and religion in this country. He is the first president to address a special session of the United Nations General Assembly, to call upon countries across the world to end religious persecution and honor the right of every person to worship as they choose. He has made substantial investments in our historically black colleges and universities. This president also continues to fight for school choice, giving parents more options to help their children flourish. My husband knows how to make a real change. From the day that I met him, 
He has only wanted to make this country the best it can be. For many years, I watched him grow concerned and frustrated, and I'm so proud to see the many things he has done in such a short time. America is in his heart. So while at times we only see the worst of people and politics on the evening news, let's remember how we come together in the most difficult times. And while debate rage on about issues of race, let's focus on the strides we have made and work together for a better tomorrow for everyone. Our administration has also devoted historic resources and produced life-saving results by raising awareness around opioid addiction and drug abuse, especially for children. When so often the headlines are filled with gossip, I want to take this moment to encourage the media to focus even more on the nation's drug crisis. This disease is one that affects everybody. It pays no attention to race, age, or socioeconomic status. Addiction has touched every part of our society in some way. And now more than ever, we have programs and medicine to combat it. We just need to talk about it openly. And you, the media, have the platforms to make that happen. To the media industry and as a country, I ask that we all commit to helping in our fights against drug addiction by talking about it even more. Especially as we battle the COVID pandemic, we need to remember that suicides are on the rise as people who are struggling with loneliness and addiction feel they have nowhere to turn. Parents, please talk to your children, teachers and caregivers Pay attention to signs of addiction. Lawmakers, pass legislation that allows those who ask for help to do so safely and without fear, and to provide resources for organizations that help people impacted by addiction. When the stigma is removed, people will no longer be ashamed to ask for help, and lives will be saved. And if, if you are struggling with addiction, there is no shame in your illness. Please seek help. You are worth it. In my next four years as First Lady, I will continue to build upon the best and work with individual states to pass legislation to take care of our most vulnerable. I plan to continue the work I have started with children in foster care, as well as the minority communities and tribal nations. I want to ensure children are being protected and communities have the resources needed to combat drug addiction and child neglect or abuse. Like my husband and the administration, I will continue to encourage education that supports a child's individual needs. It is vital that children are given the building blocks to succeed. I also look forward to continue my work to restore the People's House, which is a lasting symbol of pride for our nation. I believe this iconic home needs to be cared for and preserved so it can be enjoyed by the people of this country and visitors from around the world for years to come. I'm passionate about this beautiful house, the grounds, and all they represent. And now, I have a special message for the mothers of this country. This modern world is moving so fast, and our children face challenges that seem to change every few months. Just like me, I know many of you watch how mean and manipulative social media can be. And just like me, I'm sure many of you are looking for answers how to talk to your children about the downside of technology and their relationships with their peers. Like every parent in this country, I feel there are so many lessons to teach our son and responsibilities as his mother, but there are just not enough hours in the day to do it all. I remind myself 
that I'm more fortunate than most, and still have days that I look for wisdom and strength to do the very best I can for him. To mothers and parents everywhere, you are warriors. In my husband, you have a president who will not stop fighting for you and your families. I see how hard he works each day and night, and despite the unprecedented attacks from the media and opposition, he will not give up. In fact, if you tell him he cannot be done, he just works harder. Donald, Donald is a husband who supports me in all that I do. He has built an administration with an unprecedented number of women in leadership roles and has fostered an environment where the American people are always the priority. He welcomes different points of view and encourages thinking outside of the box. I know I speak for my husband and the family when I say we are so grateful that you have trusted him to be your president and we will be honored to serve this incredible country for four more years. As you have heard this evening, I don't want to use this precious time attacking the other side, because as we saw last week, that kind of talk only serves to divide the country further. I'm here because we need my husband to be our president and commander in chief for four more years. He is what is best for our country. We all know Donald Trump makes no secrets about how he feels about things. Total honesty is what we as citizens deserve from our president. Whether you like it or not, you always know what he's thinking. And that is because he is an authentic person who loves this country and its people and wants to continue to make it better. Donald wants to keep your family safe. He wants to help your family succeed. He wants nothing more than for this country to prosper and he doesn't waste time playing politics. Almost four years ago, we went into election day completely underestimated. Despite what is being said again this year, I know, just as you do, that Americans will go to the polls and vote on the behalf of their families, our economy, our national security, and our children's future. To vote for those ideals is not a partisan vote. It is a common sense vote because those are goals and hopes that we all believe in. I believe that we need my husband's leadership now more than ever in order to bring us back once again to the greatest economy and the strongest country ever known. God bless you all, your families, and God bless the United States of America. That was First Lady Melania Trump addressing the public at the Republican National Convention, which is underway. She, of course, started her address by thanking all Americans for willing to take a chance on businessmen venturing into politics, of course, alluding to her president husband, uh, Donald Trump. She then went on to thank all frontline workers, doctors, nurses and teachers for their role in tackling the COVID-19 crisis across the world. She also alluded to the 100-year anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment, that is, 100 years of women being eligible to vote in the U.S. Her speech highlighted the need for women's emancipation, and she said that women across the world need to be heard more. She also spoke of her birthplace, Slovenia, and said that it was her goal to move to the United States and work in the fashion industry. And she also referred to the U.S. as a land of opportunity, which incidentally is also the theme of the RNC this year.